I've had about 20 undergraduates working for over a year now on issues related to planetary defense, and one of the undergraduates reached out to me and said, did you know there's a movie coming out, which I didn't know. We discovered a very large comet. Oh, good for you. It's headed directly towards Earth. This comet is what we call a planet killer. So I decided to write a, another paper. It's in the back of my mind, this idea of existential threats it was always kind of bouncing around. And I thought this is a perfect opportunity to talk about what could humanity do that the dinosaurs couldn't do. So the question really was a physics question. Could you do something in this hypothetical scenario in the movie Don't Look Up? I, I love comedy, so for me the movie was a wonderful romp through the human foibles and, and the human condition. But I approached it from a very much physicist perspective of what could we do in terms of the technology that we possess. The traditional approach to planetary defense is to deflect the object, which is a wise thing to do if you have enough time to do it, and if the object is reasonably small enough. In the movie, you're faced with a very large threat with a very short time scale to respond. That's extremely problematic for any kind of deflection technique. Deflection is much like uh, playing pool or billiards, where you take one ball and you hit it against another ball and it deflects. The two of them move in different trajectories after they hit each other. But it's a quantitative question as to, for a given threat, with a given time scale to respond, how large of a mass would you need to deflect that object with in order to not have it hit you? That's the goal. It's a combination of two, time scale and size of the object. Okay, in, in the case of the movie, you have unfortunately short time scale and big object. Therefore, you have a really difficult problem if you want to deflect it. If you have shorter time scales, what you can do is break apart the object. You pulverize it, which is what pi stands for. You pulverize it and then the fragments are small and the Earth's atmosphere becomes a shield which breaks up and uh, burns up the, the threats. In the case of the movie, we would intercept with many interceptors. So it's not just one interceptor. So it's not one rocket coming in with a payload and blowing it apart like in some of the movies. It's many interceptors which break it apart, sort of like an onion. We start the outer layers and break those apart, disperse them, and then we work inward until the whole object is, is uh, fragmented and dispersed. In the case of large objects, the total energy is too large for the Earth's atmosphere to absorb without harm to us or to life in general. So in that case, what you want to do is intercept, fragment, disperse, but have the um, fragments miss the Earth um, completely. So they are dispersed with enough speed, early enough, so that they actually miss the Earth. And that's the key to our response in the paper, that humanity does possess that capability. We do have extremely powerful nuclear explosives that exist already. We don't like to use nuclear weapons, period. This is a scenario where they could be used to actually save humanity rather than to destroy humanity. So it's not so unrealistic. It's just that the, the ideas of humanity going nuts is probably also not unrealistic uh, in the process. But there's a part which is missing, which was not, I think, discussed in enough details, that humanity does possess the ability to um, prevent the extinction of us by this threat if we were to handle it properly.